What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Daily Fantasy Sports Picks and Bets. It's The Mix, powered by Mayo Media Net here on YouTube and presented by Jock Market, the Daily Fantasy app where you get paid for being smart. Yeah, woohoo! We were at it again. Download that bad boy for free. Use the promo code MMN. They're going to match the first 100 bucks for free. And if it's free, it's for me. We were doing the thing that we do as always. Like I said, just be smart. Just be cheap. Find opportunities at the bottom of the board. Follow this show. Rate, review, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And you're going to get paid in the shade. Laid like an egg. Get your host, the big dude with the big mouth from the Big Apple. Big Johnny Stud. Coming to you worldwide from Brooklyn, New York as always. Always. We're coming out the chair as always. Come on. Death, taxes, sun, rising in the east, setting in the west. Bears making dookie in the woods and the big man up before the crack of dawn to bring you this. It's the fastest show in NFL. Absolutely anywhere, man. Take that bad boy to the bank. We're doing the three pillars of profit at always using run the Sims projections to come up with the highest projected players at each position. They're doing a little, you know, value exercise, little cost per point analysis using those same brilliant projections. Make sure you go with those people that run the Sims. Love that stuff there. We talk about it during the, during the show. You get to fine-tune the dials with team totals, which in this age of kind of ubiquitous information where everybody's getting much sharper and, you know, projection systems are kind of at the fore, I think the true pathway to edge without trying to be too crazy is, is just that. Just fine-tune the dials on the team totals. Let the smart people at the projection systems take care of those, you know, usage Um kind of spreads and let the rest fall as it may again we'll be doing it again let's just do it man enough of that we need more of this let's get it it's week 12 monday night foosball we got steel workers we've got baby horses it's your blue chips brought to you by jock market again you got to download the app and again i you know me i'm always super honest with all the listenership and i think that's why people kind of gravitate to patty and, and myself you know it's really just about helping because we do care like hey, woo, what a crazy idea you know if you are new man maybe you stay away from the showdown stuff download get your hand in the cash and see what we're talking about it's the main slates where you really want to do it and i appreciate all the people out there that have reached out showing me those green screens i know we have some today all right it's steelers and colts remember these are projections let's have them speak to us on the steel town side it's Najee harris at the top with 19 points we'll get to it yes yes he's look good yes he looked like he might have actually had juice for the first time in two years i'm not sure i'm buying it we're going to get into it in a second followed up by kenny pickett at 17 and a half and whee, that big tear drop down to pat Fryermuth at 12 and a half who i happen to really like then to deontay johnson the same 12 and a half to george pickens at 10 Steeler off, it's really not very efficient. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. Over to the Colts side, it's JT Jonathan Taylor looking really good as of late, right? What an up and down season. Fantasy's a crazy game. And had you just landed back on earth, you'd think he'd look like the first pick overall. With those people, I don't know how those teams are doing, man. Maybe some of my best ball teams are getting a shot of life. So Jonathan Taylor, the highest projected player on the board. Though it's really a tie with Najee Harris. Give me Taylor Shocker at 19. Down to Matt Ryan at 17 and a half. New life with Jeff Saturday at the helm just doing what we talked about understanding the chess match that is pro football you don't think Jeff Saturday knows the game he's playing with Peyton Manning you know a butt to face for a decade he understands you've seen a ton of two high shells what does that mean the top is no longer being able to get cut off the defense that that doesn't mean that you can't succeed you have to beat it in the middle if you're losing at the point of attack again all the stuff we've been talking about you do what this is where the Colts are at they moved into a pure shotgun offense which allows an old man with cement shoes like Matt Ryan an extra half a second to read the field we were going to get kind of low a dot targets again let's we'll do it in the game breakdown then it's Michael Pittman at 16-2 Paris Campbell 11-7 <clears throat> people yeah uh, again man the projection people are much smarter than I am but you got to be willing to push back I think Campbell and Pittman in particular in this new iteration of Indianapolis with Jeff Saturday, right? I think, well, again, something we talk about, being careful with season-long stats, although we will use some, knowing where to kind of cut them and split them. And when you're changing the coach, that's changing the quarterback, man, and you get your number 101 running back back, it's hard to for me to kind of blend those things. I'm much more interested in what we just had as a better representation of what we'll see going forward. And then Alec Pierce, 8.1. This one's a little weird. He, I actually, shocker, I like Pierce today because of the um, heavy man of zone that the Steelers are going to play. Pierce has had some nice games in the zone Steelers. You can also beat them outside the numbers, even though they're tough up front. 
right? When they are beaten up front, they get beaten in isolation because they play, they're going to play a lot of man. Pierce also, it's funny you say how you play a lot of man and a lot of zone is a little bit of context for everybody. A, a ton of man, like a ton of man, like the highest man coverage is probably like 50%. Or so. So the other half is still always zone. When we say heavy zone, that's almost exclusively. We're talking like 80 to 90%. And remember, there are throwaway plays and stuff where you can't do that. So it's almost exclusively. So there's your totals. I don't know. The projection system telling us this one's going to be pretty close. Again, right now, team totals are down to 20 and a half to 19 and a half. It's really, really close. I think we have a bit of a spread here that I'm not buying again. I think Fryermuth. The usage he's been getting is closer to, or even above, you know, Johnson and the inefficiency he's had. Again, the Colts are going to play a lot of zone. And the other side is probably right on the mark outside of, I would consolidate Pittman and Campbell. So we're going to have a dogfight. It's going to be close. we got two really good defenses. Let's dive up into it, doing the thing we do as always. These are year to date stats and then we'll split them in a little bit colt offense listen it's been a really rough go but again think about the adjustments that we've seen minus 24 percent rush dvoa 3.94 adjusted line yards 24 attempts for 99 carries half of a rush that rushing touchdown per game those are all firmly in the bottom like bottom three bottom four bottom five at best combined with a minus 22 percent pass dvoa they have a lot 40 sacks only 222 yards per game it's been a really really rough go for the colts from a total standpoint but with the change in strategy again it's not like they've been super prolific it's just now that they're becoming efficient and taking advantage of probably the tools that they have right which is a high iq kind of cerebral quarterback ability to read the defense and then just make a smart read right so that's why we're seeing a lot of these totals come down again back to what i was saying this you know the dreaded too high shell the way to beat it is at the point of contact, if you can't run, like I said, it's throwing to slot. Where does that go? Generally to the middle of the field. What does that mean? The clock is ticking. So what are we seeing? A lot of kind of sustained drives, but these things have the clock ticking the entire time. And that's why you see, man, entire quarters are going by. A team goes away with a field goal and you're just pulling your hair out if you're an overbetter. Same for a lot of the prop betters. Sorry, excuse me one second. I've been a little bit under the weather all right let's take a look at the last four defense again i always like to do that as well remember macro to micro telescope to microscope you know all the sharp stuff that we're doing again if you think we're leaving you with a nice lesson that after today's game and you don't care what happened maybe we left you with something a feather in a cap make sure you rate review and subscribe remember five star reviews are the you know compliment the tutti compliment let my boss know how good of a job i'm doing never hurt anybody colts defense last four very very strong very like both of these defenses are very strong i have all this stuff conditionally formatted so when i see the colors it jumps right off the page colts defense last four 20 points a game below 300 yards per game below 4.8 yards per play and a positive defensive epa per snap just across the board doing really well opposing Offenses averaging 24 yards a drive, two and a half minutes scoring on only 30%. Those are all in the top five. 96 rush yards a game, 3.4 running back yards per carry, 1.0 yards before contact per rush. That is in the top three. The Colts are getting penetration. That's a great stat. I love it. It really gives you... It's another almost way to look at the line. The pass defense, again, you know, it's just... It's it's 64% zone. So what do you get? What I was saying... You get a lot of completions. You get a high completion rate allowed. That number's at 69, but the yards per reception is only 10. That's really good. Only 201 yards per game. Again, really good. So you've got to be careful. There's some of the nuance and the context. I think that you get here, maybe that you don't get everywhere else. You know, again, I know I use so many stats. That's kind of one of my thing, but they're going to sing to you. Remember, you know, they, they really want to connect and tell the story. We want to speak to these teams and these players across statistical baskets. Be careful with the word predictive. I think all stats are descriptive. They only look backwards. But the better of an understanding that you have of the inputs, I think that'll just give you a better idea of what's going to come out the other end. 
So that cold, that cold defense has been really good. Top five defensive EPA in the zone, a positive EPA. And man, they're just doing it all. Steeler defense. Again, DJ Watt is back. Are you really thinking of these defenses, these teams, the same? No, you're not, or you shouldn't be. Steeler defense, number one in the league in defensive plays allowed. That's at 54, two minutes and 22 seconds per drive allowed. That's in the top Five, 67 rush yards per game. I think that's number one. 3.4 yards per rush. One and a half yards before contact per rush. Steeler rush D right now is like top five. They're going to try and funnel the Colts. This might work to the Colts' advantage with that shotgun stuff I'm talking about. But just expect high volume. So like completion overs, Ryan completions. I don't know if you're really going to get yards, right? You might get 30 completions. You might only get 215 yards because it's going to be six to Pierce. You know, um, I'm sorry, six to Campbell and eight to Pittman. The Pierce targets will be the ones that are in the double digits. Why we want to look for him, although he's not on the prop board. Steeler D back to it. The way you've been able to get to them is through the air again they play a lot of man leading the league last month with 45 percent they're good for a lot of splash plays and they blitz a ton they haven't produced a ton of pressure but they have blitz a ton and that's why you'll see alluding to the prop play at the end that's what we call a teaser in the business who i like because of where those targets go in man and against the blitz though again we're not looking at pressure stats you gotta be careful with pressure stats as well we'll get to that maybe we talk about the patriots in the weekend so mixed bag across the board here i'm being careful with the 265 pass yards allowed to the steelers that's got to be the thing we're looking at but it's only 20 completions per game on a 63 percent completion percentage so what does that mean you got to be efficient on downfield targets which means what we want to be looking for pierce i was really kind of frustrated that he wasn't listed maybe books are trying to figure out the same thing i am like how good is this again steelers bottom three yards per reception bottom three passing touchdowns allowed those things not really that sticky so boom that's your blue chips everybody the way we're looking at it is defensive battle volume for the running backs probably getting stymied at the line of scrimmage i'm not really buying the harris breakout i do like taylor but the front of that that still defense is not really going to be smashing your head we know he can catch the ball maybe we'll see some sneakiness right using that shotgun to create the same time but sometimes what offenses do again x's and o stuff right is allow the defense in and go around it right so it, it be careful, you know, people just do that. Steelers allow all those passing yards, load up on the Colts, passing offense. I just don't necessarily see it that way. See, that's one of those things where, to me, passing yards allowed is an output stat, and I'm more into the way, pathway that we're getting there. They've given it up because they've given up the big plays. Alpha wide receivers have done very well. If you're drawing up a narrative or playing multiple entries, yes, that probably should be one of them. Right? Again, I'm not trying to say I'm right or wrong. We want to be open. We want to try and take intellectual and kind of objective um, approaches, right? It's not right. It's not wrong. It's just different. Boom. There's your last feather in the cap. So I think it's going to be as close as it looks. I think I like the Colts more than I like the Steelers because I think the pass game, when it needs to be, will be the one to make the big play against the Steeler defense that has been the one to allow it. So please rate, review, and subscribe. You know, if you're picking up what we're putting down, digging the first pillar of profit, the ball is past the you know, midfield um, <laughs> area, we're past the logo. Uh, let's get it into the red zone and punch it in. Second pillar of profit, Penny Stocks, brought to you by Jock Market. Make sure you download that app. Okay, take advantage of free cash. How's that for easy advice? All right, it's two QBs, three running backs, five wide receivers, a tight end, and a partridge in a pear tree if you squint fast enough. Again, for the audio-only listeners, really my highest recommendation is... This chart, no one else is combining conventional DFS with jock market the way that we have using the Venn diagram, right? And trying to smash that piece in the middle. Remember, the conventional style is what dominates the market. Those ownership numbers drag IPO, right? So I feel like I, I haven't actually tested it, but I'll bet my bottom dollar that projection ownership numbers are the leading indicator for jock market ipo right and it's just really a volume thing we see these in outside markets another lesson that you might be able to use monday through friday all right it's maddie ryan and kenny pickett of course only two qbs in the game this one you know decided by a nose i don't even know if we've seen anything this close both projected for within a tenth of a point again we do not overreact to that 
both salaries within 200 DK bucks don't react to that, which gives you a cost per point within, you know, 14 bucks, which we don't react to projection half a percent off the IPO a dollar. That's probably the biggest disparity, right? Well, you figure that's like 8% or something, but I like Ryan. So if I had to choose one in conventional, I would pick Ryan because it is a little bit of cost. And I think the projection should be a touch higher where I think Pickens pickets might be a touch too high and where Ryan has the lower IPO. That's where we're going to go. The, remember, everyone, one of the reasons jock market greater than sign conventional DFS, which is one of the reasons, you could play all of them. Right? In It's a free market. And I think that's what I love about it so much. For USA, you're allowed to do what you want. In conventional play, you must pick one quarterback and one quarterback alone. And sometimes if you miss it, you miss the guy to have, and you're out. Empty pockets, lots of crying, hat in hand. Jock market, you get play all the quarterbacks on the slate, and if you lever it right, according to the pricing, one hit drags the whole thing up to break even. I know it's funny, I'm the handicapper that always talks about losing and playing to break even. That's also why I'm able to bet every single day for years at a time without putting money into an account, which I think is... Probably as important or not, maybe more important than making money, right? Losing is worse than anything. Remember, if you lose 10%, you need to win 11% to get it back. There's a good lesson for you. Bam, feathers sticking out of the cat. Man, contacts pouring out the nose. Let's get the running backs. Najee Harris, Jonathan Taylor, Deion Jackson. Normally, you know we like the backup running backs on, on this show, right? That's where you find uh, the value because these guys, IPO or DK, you know, priced at these minimums, and, I mean, listen, it's one game, and anybody could fall into the end zone, right? Uh, sometimes running backs just have to come off the field. Guy might have taken a good hit, and you get replaced. It's just, it's so wonky, it really is. It's just so wonky, it might even be after a big play. The guy's gassed. Sometimes it's a big play, right, and it comes back. Now he's gassed, and he's out, and now the running, your backup is on the field for a couple plays in a high-value situation inside the 30 or so, you know, where they can get it done. So, that, something that I normally target, I don't know if I can get there because he's a little more expensive than I want. The guy we want to look for on the other side is probably Derek Watt with Jalen Warren out. We know Najee gets all these touches, and... Man, if something happens to him, the next guy up is the guy to get it. He's not even on this board because the projections are a bit off. So just a little bit for everybody. You know, you can't fit it all in this one little sheet that you should be jumping over to Twitter. At John Legaze or at Mayo Media Net. Follow us up and download this stuff. We put it out for free. If you'd like to look at all the information at once without me kind of yammering over it. So then we know it's all about the heavyweights. It's Najee versus JT. Like I said, I'm a little bit bearish on Najee. I think Taylor's versatility gives him the upper hand in, you know, what's a very much a tough defensive matchup on both ends, right? We did the line stats. These things are no, are no joke. These front sevens are, are very good. The play calling is very good. They're run stoppers, and that's something that you either do or you don't do, right? We see that across the league. The Chargers, the Texans, like, you don't, if you don't stop the run, it's not something you could really scheme into. You can be bowled over, you know what I mean? So, unless you have, you know, uh, Tim <laughs> Andercust, who's you know, there in the middle to tackle Derrick Henry oh so easily, you know, what are you going to do? So I prefer Taylor, even with the higher price. For me, I think you have to dial up the projection, which would lower the cost per point. The thing I'm looking at for jock market is Najee IPO 12.45, JT IPO 13.33. That's way too close for the difference that I see. Remember, I, I, I just, you, you got to stick to an narrative. In DK... FD conventional, I'm not a 150 player. So maybe maybe I should preface that sometimes is because I'm not a 150 player, I try and narrow my narrative, right? The worst thing you can do is be inconsistent in this in these games. Is I like this to be, you know, a defensive battle in the trenches and then bet like overs and all types of passing alts. Like that's a little weird. You shouldn't do that. If you think it's gonna go not to go over, then be consistent. Again, not right or wrong, just different. I'm a bit worried about the projection of how Najee gets the 19. I don't know how many points the Steelers really score. I, I'm I'm bearish on that. I'd rather have JT with the pass catching, the lower projected ownership, even with the touch higher IPO. Into the running back room, Campbell, Deontay Johnson, Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, George Pickens. Man, I don't know if we have had one. I don't know if there's a team. These might be the top two teams as far as balance goes 
I mean, let's get some utilization stats. We have a minute to do this stuff. You know, I like to bring the smoke every day. So, last four, again, really what you want to be looking for, the best way to kind of encapsulate injuries and recency and strategical moves and stuff. Pittman and Campbell. Roots, respectively, 133 to 114. Targets, 31 to 22. Receptions, 23 to 16. Receiving yards, 203 to 201. Not really the kind of disparity, you know, you're seeing in the pricing. Receiving yards per game, 50.8 to 50.3. Again, not really seeing much of a disparity. So I kind of like Campbell as my value. That's really where I'd be going. And again, the thing that I like the most is Campbell is really the slot guy He's also been the zone target. And I think that's something that we're noticing. Man, how do I put this? Okay, so though we've had drop downs in scoring, real life, and fantasy, right? Though that's that's marked, noted, documented, and objective. Like that's happened. Because of these new kind of extreme approaches, I believe it leaves openings. And when the opening is exposed, it gets exposed over and over and over and over again. Almost like I said, look, once you can't stop the run, teams run the ball a million times. Perfect example, Washington Commanders. You know, beating the Eagles, winning again against the Falcons. Why? Those teams are struggling to stop the run. So Washington said, we don't really care about the playbook whatsoever. Hyper run, you know, two different guys going to have 20 carries or whatever. Three guys going to have a dozen carries or whatever, you know, on the Falcons. They, they, that's not to say that's a new thing, but now that's really caught on. We're only a few teams are doing it. A bunch of teams are doing it. So I think that's what we're going to end up seeing. The Colts losing at the point of attack, needing to keep with the shotgun, not being able to run, having to use, again, that shotgun to the slot where Campbell's disparity in pricing, right, Pittman 10.2, Campbell 6.8, projections, Michael Pittman 16, Paris Campbell 12. To me, I'm not covered there, right? For So if I have, again, I'm not seeing tons and tons of yardage, I think we might get Alec Pierce for a splash play. Keep that in mind. If I have the Campbell number dialed up a touch and the Pittman number dialed down a touch, even with it as constituted, Campbell projected for 12, 6.8 salary, leaves you at 581. Pittman 16 point salary, up uh, 16.2 projection, excuse me, 10.2 salary, leaves you at 630. Those are really, really close. Campbell with the lower ownership, one-third of the IPO, $8, which on a jock market slate, for a show that is really, really good. I think it's like a top three or top four player to profit nicely. So the more I speak through this, the more I really like Paris Campbell again. He's going to be seeing a lot of targets today, I think, or at least, again, an equal amount to Pittman, so I just give him the greater than sign because of the value. There's every reason to think Pittman's going to have a good game, too, from a volume standpoint. We mentioned that. You can get the Steelers outside the numbers. I'm not sure where the A dot's going to be, and that's where we really wanted to see Pittman, but we haven't. Is the intermediate look going to be there? You know, I, I'm not sure. Steelers side, so, so, so inefficient. I really struggle. I really struggle with this. The only guy I really like on them is actually Pat Fryermuth. I mean, Deontay Johnson, 19 targets on 128 routes. He only has 13 receptions on 128 routes. I mean, that it's just terrible. 0.93 yards per route run. That's like a bottom third in the league. 14.8% target per route run. Again, that's like bottom third in the league. Like, you're just not looking for that. Yeah, he's dominating the air yards on the team at 21 for the wide receiver room, but who's really dominating? It's Pat Fryermuth. So the play we want today, it's Pat Pat Fryermuth, so we're zooming down to the tight end. Let's tie it up before we get out of here. i got a player prop for you. We're going to pick up, pick up player props here. May I be that. So it's Pat Fryermuth. Again, projected for 12 and a half. The same as Deontay Johnson. More than George Pickens. People are starting to understand he's really where, you know, you want to look in the Steeler offense right now. His 26 targets. Well, more than that in Johnson 19, who leads Pickett with 13. That's 8.7 targets per game, 5.3 receptions per game, 57.3 reception yards per game, 84 air yards per game. Those are all the team leaders. 25% team target, 31% team air, 24% target per route run. Those are team leaders. The 11.1 PPR points per game the last month, also a team leader. And again, what people are not really getting everywhere else. Frymuth, a third of those routes are in the slot right now. He's become a slot receiver. So that's another way. The same thesis 
on the Colt end, it's a little less shotgun from the Steelers, if I'm not if I'm not incorrect. Actually, no, see, that's a game where you want to split it. It was not early on. And here we go again. My first little lowercase L, although I did catch it in real time. Steelers, top three, it looks like. Top five. In shotgun at 76%. And you got to be careful because there are some other wonky stuff that gets built in. Once you're over that, you're a shotgun team. So we want to be looking slot. We want to be looking Friar Muth, especially, again, if the Steelers are going to lose the point of attack. Perhaps be stymied, frustrated with the run between the tackles. We don't know Najee's going to catch the ball, but we've also seen him hang like eight receptions for 19 receiving yards. He's a pop for a touchdown, of course, right? Pass interference in the end zone, Najee scoring the touchdown. So there's something there for these guys, but I don't know if I can get with the Najee 1245, and I don't think I could get with the Deontay Johnson 7.6 or picking 7.4 DK bucks, right? When we can get Fryermuth, who has. A similar IPO to all they're all within a dollar. I actually my big shoulder is covered at eight thirty for all you video listeners out there. So from the value standpoint, I got Ryan at QB. I like Taylor, but also Watt right on the other side. Paris Campbell, Pittman if he ends up below that twelve dollar number. Sometimes these IPO projections come in a bit low. Alec Pierce, who I do like because a single share of Pierce, the pop. The long splash play touchdown, if he gets it, right? That like 12, 13 point play is an automatic profit at that price. Keep that in mind. And then Frymuth, I think, is a way of voluming his way, you know, to the the wide receiver one for the Steelers, where he could outscore Kenny Pickett, who that again, I think that 17 is lofty. So you dial down Pickett to 14, you dial up Frymuth there, you're over 14. So I have Frymuth basically greater than sign everybody in the Steelers, and boom, there you have it. Those are your penny stocks brought to you by Jock Monk, love it, that app. Why we love it so much is this kind of stuff, this kind of play. You don't have to get roped into three wideouts. Maybe I like four wideouts. Maybe I like two QBs and a tight end. That's what I want to play because that's where I believe the profit is. And remember, why that matters so much is each of the plays in Jock Monk, they all stand on their own. Right? Each play is individual. Each one can be weighted levered individually another greater than sign that'll be the last one before we wrap this part up you could put a hundred bucks on ryan at the price and buy a single share a share of pierce right you don't have to equally lever all positions i think that's really the best way for me to put it conventional dfs forces you to equally lever all positions and not to say that's bad there are sure people that make money at D- dfs i almost had my a big winner take all take down yesterday i've been playing those that's what i think i think you know dfs is a lollipop structure anyway right all the payouts are at the very top so give me the nine dollar entry to beat 100 people for a thousand bucks rather than like i don't even know winning eleven dollars to finish 37th or something like that i don't really care i want to move the needle when i win all right bulls on a goal line let's give it to the fridge and punch it in. We got your week 12 Monday night foosball prop brought to you by Jock Market and the lovely ladies and gentlemen at the Mayo Media Net. What a wonderful working environment. Our player prop for the day. Again, it's been a bit of a rough go across the board because of all the stuff we mentioned. So rather than chase these minus 110 props and need a higher percentage of overs than a lot of games are willing to give us, though, man, rats, yesterday. I was really rocking and rolling in jock market. I was top five overall for a good part of the day. I didn't have players in the night game because, you know, I, I thought that one had a chance to really be in under Pittsburgh and Green Bay. I thought it might be a lot of running and a lot of slop fest. Well, we got a lot of running, but then there being 80-yard touchdown runs and, you know, whatever, 70 points got scored. And I think three of the top five players came from that game, which bumped a lot of our guys off it but man do not be discouraged we have been getting better as the year goes on because that value stuff has been paying the bills love it all right our player prop today we could do it really quick because we already did the analysis it's paris campbell i love the long odds that's where i was getting when you want to get if you're struggling the best way to do it is never to risk more the idea is always to risk less and let's get a longer shot and a really low bar it's paris campbell plus 60 receiving yards that's an alt prop it's a plus 2 
05. And I think we really laid this one out. I mean, the game law kind of speaks to it already. Going back six weeks against Jacksonville, he had 57. I mean, we're right there. Then it was 70 against Tennessee. Check. 4-3 to three against Washington. I mean, just miss. Floor game against the Pats. And then he clears it easily the next two weeks. 76 on the Raiders. 67 against the Eagles. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot. I just think we're going to have a chance to volume our way there. You know, we're it's we're looking for, it's not going to be two for 60, people. It's going to be, you know, we're not going to do it on a play, which probably means if we don't start to get it early, we might be in a bit of trouble because they're only going to come 8, 9, 10, you know, 11 yards at a clip. So we're really looking for a, let's call it like a 6 you know, for 68, you know, I think that's what we're looking at. Maybe even like a 7 for 65, 7 for 64. I know that sounds really close, but, you know, 4 yards is 8%. So, it's it, it's nice, clear. You know, to that math again, for people that are betting straight, which I always suggest pro- parlays are a good way to get in trouble, a good way to combat that, again, to get your win percentage lowered to a place where you can really keep the the ROI maximized, I think. Because what we're really playing against here, I think this the 110 prop was like 47. So the first old prop is plus 50, and that one's like plus 120 or something. And then the plus 60 jumps up to plus 205. So that's my lesson here before we get out of here is check the old props. It, it, listen, if you're really locked in and you have your process, I that I don't want to disrupt, right? If you have a steady process. What I would like you to do is just take a look and start to think, wow, how often are the props that I'm hitting really just clearing that first bar? I have found the props that we've hit, and we haven't hit a lot by percentage. The ones that we have hit have really cleared the bar, gotten these plus 200, plus 220, plus 240 paybacks, which is floated. Again, my player props are down slightly if you're following the Twitter stuff and the Patreon stuff. That's all free. The That's the reason why. right? If they were all individualized at minus 110, we'd get beat. And that's kind of why, again, I... I I sustain in betting markets win or lose. Like, I think that's what people think is if you're betting, you have to win. Well, that's only if you don't know how to manage your money. And that sounds like just about the best way to wrap it up with a really awesome lesson is risk management people. Everything, everything, you know, greater than sign 100 times. With that thing that I mentioned before, losing is the worst thing in betting, right? Like, shocker. But the real lesson is the numbers that I attach to it, objectively quantifying losing Every time you lose 10%, you need 11 to get it back. If you have $100 to start and you lose 10%, you're down to 90 If you make 10% back live betting, well, you're only at 99 And to people who aren't sharp, and I, I don't mean to put anyone down, but it's the type of thinking, right, that 1% doesn't matter. If you don't think 1% matters, that's not a sharp way of thinking. Because if you continue that process, you don't end up around flat or with this like marginal nothing, negligible nothing. You end up at zero. So there's your last lesson, feather in the cap, nuance and context at the four. When you roll with us at Mayo Media Net, rate, review, and subscribe. I don't know if that didn't earn a like button, stick at me. Boy, it is as long as I could to beg for it, man. Stick your cartoon finger up inside me. Whoop! Because those likes matter way more than they should. Thanks for picking up what we're putting down here at Mayo Media Net. Give us all the good stuff. Rate, review, subscribe, download the Jock Market app promo code is mmn and yo man enjoy the game enjoy your day when we're done with the book enjoy that pay and remember everybody when you work this hard it feels a lot less like luck yo peace